Alrighty guys, welcome to Vanier Park. Today we've got about 23 kilometers of wind coming straight in off the ocean, peaking to about 26.9 in this case. Later it grows a bit stronger. When you get set up with your wing on the ground, it's best to point the wing tip straight into wind and have a friend hold it if possible. That way there the wing will not power up as you're getting hooked into the wing. Notice that the wind's coming straight in and across the wing. Worst case scenario is a wing tip could fold over if you're by yourself. We have the risers out, lines are clear, and we're ready to clip into the harness. Okay, now we're clipped into the harness. I've taken off my left brake, and if the wing does power up, I still have the power to kill the wing with the one brake off. I'll go over to make sure that you have the brake taken off correctly. I grab the mail on with the right hand, and I follow along the riser with my left hand, making sure that we have a clean relationship so that we know that that brake is taken off nice and cleanly, and there's no tangles or it's not wrapped around any risers or lines. I then take the right brake off by holding the left mail on and making sure that it's clean as well. No tangles at all. When you come back to Vanier Park and you are here by yourself, you may notice a wing tip has folded over while you're getting clipped in. Okay, no problem. But once you walk over there, you could very well be entering into the power zone. So make sure you got those brakes off correctly because you may need to kill your wing. We're now going to walk over to the power zone and as we do, we'll notice if the wind which is coming in at about 23 kilometers an hour right now is going to pick up any of our leading edge and inflate the wing. In this case, I'm actually going to show you how to open up the wing by just using a little bit of one A-line. That one single A-line that's connected to a leading edge that's open can actually inflate the entire wing and give you a full open wing ready to build a wall. If by chance you do happen to see a wing tip that's still not inflated, you may walk over there and pull out the wing tip if you like, but remember you're going to need to take a couple of wraps on your brakes before you do that because there's a very high chance that that wing can inflate right now and you'll be wafted by the wing. So as I'm pulling the wing tip out from the lines, making sure that it's clear, I know that once I have a clean cell open to the wind, I'll be able to open that wing tip again quite easily by just applying a little bit of pressure to the brake on the right hand side and a little bit of an A on the left hand side and then your wing will then be open. Uh, this might take a little bit of practice but during your Vanier session I'll show you how to do that. Okay just quickly I'm going to take a wrap on my left hand and I'm going to make sure that I keep that left wing tip down. On the right I'm going to pull just the right A a little bit and right after I pull the right A I'm going immediately to the brake and that opens up that right wing tip nicely getting me ready to build a nice flat wall. Now it's really important that I point out some obstacles that you will have around you at the park. Notice the kites in the background. You want to stay well away from those kite strings. Notice where the guys are that are holding the kites. Also you may have some kids in the background. You have people walking by you. When it comes time to inflating in strong wind, you want to give yourself lots of room to correct. And you've got a V shape uh, distance in behind you and you visually are checking your v-shape at all times because it's your responsibility to make sure that your wing doesn't go anywhere near a kid a stroller dogs people walking and definitely not a kite string because that will cut your glider okay now getting ready to build our wall let's make darn sure we know how to kill the wing because heaven forbid it takes off on you at this point you may go for a run for a while take one wrap take two wraps and make sure that you know how to kill your wing in case you start heading towards any one of your obstacles. There's a chair back there as well that could also hurt your wing. So slam your hands all the way back behind you, run towards a wing tip, away from the obstacles. If you have kids to your right, you're gonna to run to your left. If you have people to your left, you're gonna to run to your right. It's, you get the idea. Always assessing your environment, always knowing what's around you, always making sure that you have lots and lots of room to kill your wing. Okay, now we're adopting the Mark Mitzos technique where we take the A's in the left hand, the back risers in the right hand, make sure that the brake lines are free and clear of your hands so they have freedom to move through the pulleys independently. I always check both hands to make sure that the A's are clear, the back risers are clear before I bring up my wing. I'm going to kill the wing by bringing the right hand all the way back to my right side. The hand doesn't go in front of you, it goes to beside you, and that gives you your maximum killing performance. You can have 35 kilometers an hour of wind coming at your wing, and this will keep your wing on the ground. Okay, wind getting ready to launch, both hands all the way out, and if it does start taking off on you, you know how to kill the wing now. Okay, now starting to work towards making the wall, building the wall. It's got to be nice and flat, all along the entire leading edge. If there's one side that's high, that will be the side that will lead when you go to launch. 
So it's really important that both sides are the same height off the ground. You want the middle primarily to come up first, so you can even pull the wingtips in a bit if you like. But realistically, with most modern wings nowadays, as long as you have a nice flat wall, it will come up straight. Use your feet techniques. If you have to move from one side to the other really quickly, where you're stepping one foot over top of the other foot, not sidestepping, this is very effective to move quickly to one side or the other. Most of the time, the wind will be coming straight in the launch, and you won't have to do too much feet work. If you have to go quickly, you know how to do it now. Foot over foot, not foot beside foot. Okay, very important. You'll notice that in some wind conditions, the wing will be bouncing a little bit. Just keep your body nice and steady, and try to keep a nice steady wall. This is really important in regards to getting yourself a nice clean, even inflation. If you need to, walk towards the wing just a tiny little bit, put it on its back, and that way there, just a little bit of the leading edge will be inflated, not the entire wing. For stronger coastal wind conditions, this is really effective because then you're, you're not really fighting the wing. You're, you know, you're there to have a conversation with the wing. You're there to work the wing so that it's uh, comfortable for you. In higher wind conditions, yeah, you can walk towards it. And uh, you can see the white caps on the, on the water indicating more than 25 kilometers an hour of wind. Those are the times you want to you know, not be muscling your wing around, not fighting your wing. And this helps you uh, build a relationship with it. And it's uh, quite easy. Just a little bit of body pressure. That's all you need to keep it nice and flat, nice and steady. Okay, now that I've got a nice flat wall, I know that when I bring the wing up, it's going to pull me 10 or 15 feet in that direction. So I purposely place myself down in front of the launch so that when it does pull me, I have some room to run up the launch and depower the wing. So essentially, the wing's going to come up. This is a high wind situation. The wing comes up, and I'll be pulled underneath the wing. The idea is to not fight it and have this wing surge too fast ahead of you, but literally use your shock absorbers. Let your body work with the wing. So as it's pulling you up, you actually are going to be coming more and more in contact with the control of the wing by using your body in a shock absorber kind of mentality uh, action to uh, build more of a relationship with the wing. And you guys will essentially be talking to each other you know, as you're building that wing into its perfect position, getting ready to launch. Let your body be pulled up, not plucked off the ground, by running up the hill and crouching as you're powering the wing. As you're starting to power the wing, let your body go down and back up with the wing coming up. Okay, so first we're gonna inflate the wing with just the A's, and then we're gonna adopt the Mark Mitzos technique. So just the A's, the wing comes up, body crouches down, and as it's coming up, stabilize, stabilize, and once it's where you want it, Go ahead and turn forward. Don't look at the wing, just feel where it is and make the small adjustments and moves to kite the wing before getting into the bird position and launching. Once you are comfortable and it's where it needs to be, you can adopt the bird position or you can turn and kill it. Take a couple of wraps if need be and enjoy resetting the wing. It might take you a couple of tries before you're able to, you know, manipulate the wing like this, but You'll get it. So these 23 to 26 kilometer an hour wind situations are primarily a coastal situation. Unlikely you're ever going to launch with this kind of wind inland because it's you know going to be a lot more rotary and thermals will be bashing you around and it's not necessarily a safe way to fly inland with this kind of high wind. But it's really good that you have control of your wing in these conditions and it's fantastic for you know, appreciating when you do have a light or medium wind situation. Okay, now we're going to inflate it using the Mark Mitzos technique where we've got the back risers in the right hand and we've got the A's in the left hand. Primarily, when I bring the wing up this time, my main focus after building a flat wall is to choke it as it's just becoming above my head. So just as the wing is coming to the apex, I choke it by pulling the back risers and that's what actually stops it from shooting overhead. That's what stops it from you know, going too far forward and getting a frontal. So sometimes there's a tremendous amount of pressure that's needed on those back risers to bring it up and choke it so it doesn't overshoot. So the stronger the wind, the more it's going to assist you to want to pull it up, which is also another reason why you want to let it pull you under the glider is to depower the glider as it's coming up so you don't have to pull it so hard to choke it. All right, so let's bring the wing up and we will primarily focus on choking the glider as it's reaching its apex and right about there 
You can see me pulling the back risers down quite firmly to make sure it doesn't overshoot. Now as the wing goes to the left, I bring the back risers to the left. As it goes to the right, I bring the back risers to the right. We also move under the center of the wing. So as the wing moves to the left, I move a little bit to the left. As the wing moves to the right, I move a little bit to the right. So move left, break left. Move right, break right. We're now going to get a side view here so you can see how much I'm actually controlling the wing by using the back risers as compared to the A's. Some people will say back risers only. Well, yes, when there's very little movement needing to be done, very little correction needing to be done, the back risers is enough to get you what you want. Sometimes if it's overshooting or it's really going hardcore off to the side, you will have to use the A's in the opposite direction in which you're needing the back risers to go. Okay, So use your back risers to kill the wing when you want to bring it back to the ground and you'll have 100% total control with that once again. Notice, in tw even in 26 km an hour wind, I'm not going for a run by bringing the wing from the top above my head to killing it. I'm literally staying in the same place. That's the power of using the back risers for killing the wing. It's absolutely wonderful. Do that with the brakes, you're going to go for a run for about 10 or 15 feet. Doing it with the back risers, you stay right where you are. Okay, now this next section, we're going to talk about stabilization. It's probably one of the most important parts of the launch. It's the decision point. When that wing comes up above my head, it has to be 100% stabilized before I turn forward. We bring the wing up, we crouch down, we let it pull us up the hill. Don't forget we're in 23 to 26 km an hour wind here, so it's going to have a lot more power. I'm going to doctor the wing into position using my tip back riser technique to get it nicely perfect above my head. If it's still moving around, it's not stabilized. You get a little wing tuck, it's not stabilized. Once it's perfectly in position, and I have 100% control using my shock absorber technique, only at that point will I consider turning forward. Okay, so once you have it stabilized, go ahead and turn. Now you want to lean right through the risers, hands up behind you. Don't fight the risers. And the reason why I've got that blue foam in front of me is I've put the buckle through the foam so it protects the ribs. When you're in this position for a lot of hours, it can dig into you, so get yourself a pool noodle, cut a little hole in it, put your clip through there. Alright, so without looking at the wing, you're feeling exactly where it is, and just do this for many hours and really get to know your wing, really get to know the position, really get to feel the pressure. So whether it be light wind, medium wind, or strong wind, this technique works excellent at all times. Okay, remember when it's time to ball up your wing to get out of the power zone, going 90 degrees away from the wind, and that way there you won't be fighting your wing as you're turning it in to a ball and of course carrying it back upwind to either reset or pack up the wing. All right, now it's Ricardo's turn to show us how it's done. All right, buddy, let's get it going. How does that feel? Good. You're getting it, man. You're getting it.
Okay, Rockstar, he just did it for real. Let's hear the words from the Rockstar. They just did it for real. Good job, big ass. You rock, buddy.